the average income of a freelancing video editor is this and somebody who does ui ux design is this well there is a huge difference the thing is that ui ux design is a slightly newer field not a lot of people had been doing it prior to this and for people who are getting into this right now and are good at it the company pays a premium right the number is huge the thing is you need to understand these things very well and should be able to represent what you're doing just as an example of whatever freelancing you're doing even for video editing for ui ux also you need to have a very clear structured roadmap right well in this video i'm going to be talking to you about what that roadmap is and how do you achieve it so let's get started let's start with tools the most important ui design tool in the industry today is figma right i have the series over here which talks about everything that figma is and how you can use it to create an entire project why don't you go about it and understand how a figma is supposed to be used in case you are not interested in figma there is adobe xd as well and in case you are an apple user maybe sketch might help you there are two other tools that i would suggest if you want to become a ui ux designer is webflow and protopy both of these tools are again used as supplementary tools for understanding and improving better on the web design part and somewhat of a ui ux design over here as well and lastly you need to know about chat gpt and mid journey chat gpt will be able to tell you what designs to create and mid journey will show you how they can look like it will also be a good point for you to reference a lot of designs for your inspiration now that you know the tools to be learned let me tell you a structured learning path well the basics is the first thing you need to understand these tools in detail go over these tools try out couple of small projects here and there just to get your hands on it once that is done you need to move to a slightly more advanced phase which is doing prototyping doing slightly complicated designs in terms of web design or in terms of replicating designs which already exist number 3 Once you've done this as well, your last part comes in, which is advanced learning. For advanced learning, it is best assumed to create a project, maybe using ChatGPT, and figuring out the design process for it. When you're designing this, you might just want to select very specifically what kind of input you have, what kind of output you might want to generate, and a keeping a draft of the entire journey that you follow as a designer. That means. understanding road maps designing user personas and finally creating the frameworks that can give you an idea of how the design will look like of course i'm not saying that entire design has to be customizable you don't have to make sure that everything works prototyping is a good idea but essentially what you need to do is have an entire plan of how things will work demonstrating one or two are more than sufficient moving on to the third aspect of this road map is to understand the user behavior well user behavior user psychology or user experience all of these are very same you have been understanding the ui part now let's move on to the ux to deep dive in ux you need to understand couple of things first is user empathy this is understanding the needs and the behaviors of users the second thing you need to do is some sort of a user research When you do user research, you will try to understand why they would want a particular feature and what is the feature that is used most. You don't want four tabs in your mobile screen, or out of which three are almost unusable. So these are the kind of questions you might be able to answer by doing the user research. The next thing is case studies. From a lot of case studies on the internet, you will be able to understand the behaviors of the users, and you can understand why they take decisions in a certain way. this is important so that you know the kind of audience that you're going to be targeting and lastly the major thing that you want to do is apply design principles well even in user experience there are a lot of laws such as hicks law these are the things that you need to understand in depth so that you may be able to respond to queries that your clients may ask in case they have certain issues about user behaviors and user experience So the good thing is, with all of these things, you can also try to put it back into your portfolio, and that portfolio is the next step. For your portfolio, combine everything that we have just spoken about. 
select the best of your work that you have done probably let's say three or four figure out what your process was put in your case study the user experience research that you had done the user interfaces that you had created the roadmap of how you'd want this prototype to work and probably a few examples of animations here and there all of these things gives the client a nice clarity of what your process is and if they're impressed by it they will give you that job but hey you should be visible to these clients and for that you have to have a variety of different projects so let's say if you're targeting an e-commerce client you'll need to have something in your library which is related to e-commerce if you're going for crypto you will need something related to crypto isn't that right so you need to plan the kind of clients that you might be reaching out to and create case studies and portfolios based for them and lastly put it all out on the multiple platforms that there are I'm sure that you already know of Behance, Medium and Dribble. These are the most important ones. These are the places where your clients might be able to find you or are also the easy ones on which you will be able to get a lot of references and be able to stand out if your work is better than everybody else's. Here is a simple outline of what I need you to represent in your case studies. The problem statement, the user group, the user persona, then you need to also put out the roadmap of how you've structured your entire uh, UI journey, what the user journey might have to look like, where all are the clicks and the prototypes that are going to be there. This means the animations and the interactions that will be there in your app. Maybe certain stuff about typography and so on. So those are your guiding principles for the UI UX process that you have chosen for that particular case study. And lastly, do put a small structure of what you thought it would look like and how does it look. Is it exactly as how you had imagined? Is this an app that you might be inclined to use? Iterate on your study and tell the points that you might be able to fix better in a slightly longer process or maybe with some different help. Well, this is a very simple flow of how you can create a portfolio or uh, your journey into UI UX design. I'm not going to be talking about how do you approach clients or how do you get a lot of attention from the internet because there is separate video series on that. But I hope that you've been able to get an idea of how to get started. I hope you found this video useful. Follow this channel for more such content and this channel over here so that I can give you more insights about design, video editing and freelancing. I will see you in another video.